Hi everyone, I am recording this from Starbucks this morning, so I apologize about background noise. Um, I just wanted to check in with you all. I'm back from my trip, and so communication and office hours and all those things will return to normal um, this week. So today is the 12th, Sunday morning. Um, I wanted to make a few comments here on your reading worksheets for the Alan Knight article on Cardenismo. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, this isn't for everyone across the board, but there were many of you who, uh, based on your responses in the worksheets, it seems like you didn't read past um, page 77 or 78. Um, and with this particular article, that is a problem because Alan Knight didn't begin to actually offer his own uh, thesis and interpretations of the Cardinalist period until about page 79. Um, I did uh, choose this article understanding that it, it's a little bit more difficult um, than some, but what Alan Knight does fairly well in the introductory pages is to outline the historiography of the Cardinalist area. When I say historiography, what I'm talking about is the way that other historians, other scholars, have interpreted uh, the Cardinus era and written about it in the past. And so uh, Knight spends um, quite a few pages explaining what has been written before, how people have interpreted Cardinismo, and what it's meant to, to most historians, what kinds of questions they've raised about it, um, and how they've kind of come to the conclusion, or at least overall most historians have come to the conclusion, that Cardinismo was a juggernaut in Knight's terminology. And what he means by that is that it was essentially all-powerful, that uh, Cardinus was able to impose his policies and his will throughout Mexico during his presidency without any problems. And um, you know, he concludes that that's not quite the case. Um, as he moves from page 79, so as I pointed out to many of you in the inline comments, and just when I say inline comments, if you're not, if you don't understand what I mean by that, um, in the feedback box, um, you can click on the actual number, the score, um, in my grades, and it should bring up the document, so your worksheet, with my commentary in the margin. Um, so those are the inline comments that I'm talking about. Please access them um, and look them over. Um, so, in my inline comments, I wrote to you about you know, page 79 is where he lays out his thesis, essentially. And then from there, he goes about proving it. Um, he offers evidence and interpretations. Um, so, what I want to do with, with this piece, again, understanding that it's a little bit more difficult than some, um, I wanted to expose you to historiography, I wanted you to think about how your research questions might fit with the kinds of research questions other people asked about your topic as you do your research for the final project um, and you know what how are you differing from the kinds of questions they asked um, how is your overall interpretation maybe different or does it go along with the kinds of interpretations that are offered um, in the sources that you find um, and again those are those are things that Alan Knight wrestles with at the beginning of that article um, that you should also keep in mind as you do your research. Um, although, again, with the, with the Storify, it's not something you need to really make prominent, um, but it is something to think about as you complete your research. I want to offer a little extra credit um, for the night uh, reading worksheet. So there's, there's not really a place to submit um, this extra credit I'm going to describe to you here in a second. So please email it to me. Um, either inside Blackboard or at bmorgan19.cnm.edu. So for up to 30 points extra credit, what you can do is either respond to um, some of the questions that I raised in my inline feedback to you on the reading worksheet. You'll need to do so in complete paragraphs um, and with specific um, evidence from the article. So you know, again, it's 30 points, so you don't need to write more than like two paragraphs um, in response to those questions, but you do need to be specific. Um, you do need to include evidence, and when I say evidence, I'm talking about examples from the article um, that show Alan Knight's interpretations, that show his thesis, that show the kinds of evidence that he used, you know, the primary and secondary sources that he drew on uh, to present his ideas. Um, so you need to cite those things. 
in your response um, for up to 30 points extra credit. If there's not a specific question that I asked in the feedback that you want to respond to, what you can do is uh, go ahead and identify Knight's thesis. And I've kind of I've given you some clues to doing that here in this video, although I haven't laid it out for you exactly. So identify his thesis and then explain why or why not you find his argument compelling. Um, one of the ways you'll do that is by thinking about his reasoning, um, the kinds of evidence that he draws on to provide his own interpretations and to add to the historical debate that he outlines in those first few pages. So the historiography, going back to where I began, is the debate. You know, this is how various historians have seen this issue. Um, there are different points of view. And then Knight goes on and says, this is mine. Um, so again, identify what, what his point of view is, what his perspective is, and how well he supported that idea. Or respond to some of the questions I provided you. So again, that's just uh, there for you if you want it for up to 30 points extra credit. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I hope that you have a good week and that you enjoy getting into Unit 5 this week.